Well, this is fun. This is so, it's so sweet to, for you to invite me. Well, I mean, how could I not interview you? You know, we're one of your teachers now. I know you're one of my teachers, and you've you've been like I'm my and your best friend. You, <laughs> I know. you're one of my best art friends, that's for sure. But we, you know, what's so funny is um, on my feed yesterday, it came up Pam Carricka's Pam Carricka's workshop oh, really? at Jenny Doe. I put out there, who wants to go with me to Jenny Doe uh, oh Jenny Doe Studio for Pam Carricka? And you didn't even respond on there, but all these other people did. So were we so already funny. planning to go, though? I don't know, I because we it's February. So I don't know if we were planning to go yet, but maybe shortly after that, I may have found out that you lived close by, and then we I can. Remember. I may have inboxed you or oh, something. I'm curious what happened. Isn't that where so we met, funny? You know? I know, and then we met for the first time. I know, that was so fun. I've had such that a fun time. That was so fun. Oh. Wait, I, I miss that we can't, haven't been able to do workshops. I know, I want to do, be able to do some in-person things, you know. Hopefully I know. In a, Hopefully soon. I do have, um, <laughs> like, four artists that I might book here later this year. Really? Yeah. Who? People want to come. Don't, 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 don't say it on the camera, but... I'll tell you after. Okay. Not going to tell you guys yet. We're not on, no, we're we're not on the camera, right? We are on camera It's right running? Now. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm just gonna just blend that. <laughs> I hope that this is recording. I know I should have done like a little test here. You know what? Let me stop it and okay. make sure it's picking up because this is our microphone here. Okay. Oh, uh, you should. Go I, ahead. I want to put it on. Put part of it. it. They like the natural kind of. I know, and it's so natural with you and I because you know. I know it's like so. I'm easy. trying to pretend like that's not on. It, and I, 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 I was pretending because I, I wasn't pretending because I didn't oh. think it was on. <laughs> Uh, well, but it's very easy with you, and you're the only one I ever do this with. I know. Well, I did it with Jennifer. I, did it I know. Her. She's really good. She's awesome. She does a, she's a great um, interviewer. Yes, she is. She, she really, really, is. really is a good and interviewer. And she's becoming really good at connecting people, and I know. Uh, we're talking about Jennifer Steck. I mean, she's, Love so, her. she's so wonderful in, like, connecting people and bringing community to artists yes. and um she's such a good person she is a good person and she loves animals and she does and she's an amazing she's talented in many ways i know she I is know. we love you jennifer her. we adore you jennifer <laughs> seriously adore you <laughs> oh my gosh well thank you so much for um coming to my studio and being will a willing participant for my podcast because i think this is so much fun and I just want to help people to get to know the person behind the art. Like okay. not just the artist, not just where did you go to school or you know, your art journey. Like I want to know more okay. other details. Like I like okay. to know the more personal things. Me too, that's <laughs> the stuff I want to know. It's stuff know. you don't ever talk about. <laughs> I know, so that's kind of my goal with okay. these podcasts and it's easier for me to do that with some than others because some people I know really well Okay. And other people I don't. So Yeah, sometimes you don't know if you're getting nosy and getting I know. I know. So some things I have to ask ahead of time, like, is it okay if I talk about this? And I didn't really ask you too much. So if there's anything no. you don't want to talk about, you tell me and I can either yeah, edit we'll it out or you can just say, uh, I'd rather not. But you know, I feel like we're on like a Seinfeld car show thing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. Well, good. I'm glad. I love yeah. Seinfeld. I do too. I hope this is a, as entertaining as Seinfeld. <laughs> it, it probably it'll, it'll be will close. be. It probably will be for some. It'll be close. <laughs> All right. So um, I kind of want to know a little bit about your childhood, and because I know you didn't, you weren't like you. You haven't been an artist your whole life. I mean, I think you have, but like. Not as your career. So yeah, right now, just thinking career. back to you as a kid, um, did you love art and what was, you know? I did love art. I, my first memory though was at church. <laughs> Drawing while the pastor was, was speaking? No, oh. I loved all the colored paper. So I thought, oh, I'm gonna take this home. Oh. So I take it all home, big old stack of colored paper. It was so appealing <laughs> and um, I remember my dad said, where did that color paper come from? <laughs> I brought it home from church. Oh, we're going to take that back. Oh, and I no. was so bummed. Oh, my God. But it was like, from then on, I could see I was attracted to color and mm. I was attracted to supplies. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. I loved. You're addicted. Art supplies from <laughs> forever. You know that. I do know that. And I have to do something about it. 
My or, my daughter is insisting. Oh really? Uh oh. <laughs> when the children uh, are getting I know, involved, I know. they say they're just going to check it all out when I pass away. And I said, well, there might be a box or two you'll want to look in. So or three some surprises or four have some surprises for you Hi Heidi in there. I'm just can you please saying. tell them to call me before they check anything? I know seriously. There and, was, and the whole world. There's things you're gonna want. I know. There's things you're gonna want. I know, right? <laughs> There'll be a big online estate sale. Yeah, yeah, or an estate giveaway because my family's ready to. <laughs> they'll pay for the shipping. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. So I've always liked art. And I've always taken. Well, I took art classes through, um, I know you don't want to talk about art, but no, I do. took art classes through high school, but I got real discouraged because mm -hmm. they were doing abstract art, everyone kind of the same kind of abstract art, and but there wasn't any teaching about it. They were just doing it, and the teacher was encouraging it, and I fell out of art mm -hmm. a bit. And then in college, I went back at it and liked it a lot and got nervous that it's um, going to be too competitive to make any money as a Right. as an artist. So, especially back then. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to age you or date you or anything. Especially back but, then. But, you know. Really, any time for the kind of things I was doing. Because now there's so many avenues. There are. I mean, I feel like the internet's yeah. kind of really opened wow. it up and for made real. it a lot easier for artists to have an art career. Mm -hmm. But even, I mean, even when I was finishing high school and college, you know, my Deanna yeah. and I, our parents, did not really... I, they encouraged Deanna to go on to like graphic design, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. not a, a fine artist or, you know, a painter yeah. or something of that nature. She was really amazing at um, illustration. Oh, you, I mean, I you, love illustration. And you can probably yeah. see that in her work now, yeah. too. But, you know, that's not really, it, it just wasn't really encouraged. Yeah. So, unfortunately, for a lot of us. Yeah. I, I was lucky that I loved math. You know, yeah, and that there's a connection between the two, and there, even in math classes. That's why I'm you're so. That's why you're so good at art. I, I think there's a the formulas. Strong, yeah, it's some, all it's all up in there. You can look at something. You're like, I know what I need to do to make that happen. Except that it makes it harder to be kind of loose because mm. it makes me more like problem solver structure. Yeah, yeah. So I I work hard at being looser. Yeah, that's really I think hard. I can see that. So how did you get into math? I'm curious about that. Well, did you always love um, math all through school? You know, I, I always loved math. Like in sixth grade, the teacher, well actually it was um, fourth grade, the teacher took me to a sixth grade class and sat me in their lesson where oh. they were teaching division because he wanted to show his sixth graders that a fourth grader can do this. And I didn't really get that was how, what's happening <laughs> until the whole thing transpired. Um, yeah, right. So I left. Actually, it was probably the best thing that happened to me and probably the worst thing that happened to those kids. Oh. Because I got um, such confidence because I thought, mm. oh, they think I'm good in math. Right. You know? And that's in testing where I would always shine. And so um, I just in college was taking my, I tested good in college for math. So I was, I started in algebra. I mean, I started low in math in college. Well, Usually, that's okay. You build a foundation. Yeah, people are going and taking calculus. Not know? me. I started with, like, Algebra 2. I'm, I'm in, like, Algebra, and it wasn't even Algebra 2. I think it was just beginning Algebra. Maybe that's what I was, too. <clears throat> and uh, at the uh, community college. Yeah. And so I just kept taking what I needed to take next, and uh, the teacher there took a shine to noticing that I enjoyed math and asked me to help open his tutoring center oh as the as the tutor right and so there was like i remember i remember people that i met through that you know i had friends that would come over to the house that i met through the tutoring i mean it was a great opportunity for me and for others and i loved it i've always loved teaching and i just kind of fell into it by you know kept taking math classes i enjoyed them and then i started tutoring and then I just fell into, oh, well, I'll try some teacher classes. I just fell into it. And then I took high school, um, uh, I took, was preparing for teaching high school. But oh, I, okay. Then I got out and got my class in high school to teach, and I hated it. Oh. Actually, it was junior high that I got. Oh, gosh, middle school is like. Middle school. Not an easy age. It was age. horrible. Right. Because they had you have all the kids in all different math spots that you had to track. It wasn't like you're teaching everyone the same thing. Oh, gosh. And I was too inexperienced for that. 
So I, um, I got strep throat, I went home, and I never went back. And I broke my contract. Well, you know what, though? At the it. same time, if you don't like what you're doing, you're not going to do a good job. Well, it was, you know? I didn't like it. I knew it wasn't for me. Right. And I hated doing that. And I thought, I'll never get a job now, you know. And I, I went into a deep depression. Oh. I, first time I've ever been in depression. Because oh. you know I'm always happy. Happy and upbeat. Yeah, right. It's the only time I think I've ever truly hit a depression where I couldn't hardly move. I couldn't hardly, mm. you know. And my husband was just as patient with me as he could be and would try to get me out to walk and oh my gosh nothing nothing you know when you I don't know if you've ever been depressed yes where you don't have any feelings for anything yeah and you're just not motivated to do anything no and you're just checking out and so then um, the high school where a student taught called and they needed a teacher mm. and have I told you all this before I don't think so oh I hate to I'm so myself. happy. Yeah. No. Well, myself. you know what? And uh, whoever's listening to this podcast hasn't heard the story before. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So I'll try to wrap it up real no, quick. No, no. Take your time. Okay. This is interesting. Well, anyway, so um, they had had three substitute teachers at this semester, but you know, it was only six weeks or so into the semester. Right. This is high school. This was high school. Okay. And they had um, they had had a guy that got transferred to principal. So then they had several subs. And so they asked me to come in and take over the class because I had done really well student teaching for them. I had done really well at the high oh, school age. Oh, okay. So you had I student, had student taught taught at there. this school. So they yes. knew you. So at least they knew me. So that right. was my only chance, I think, of ever getting a first job. And so they, um, they, they contacted me and I went in and they said, well, you need to go look at the class before you say yes. Okay. And so I went and looked. <laughs> These classes were like all open classrooms. There was like a center in the math department, and oh. all the classes were open. Okay. So I could just go and just see. Right. And uh, the students had airplanes flying, paper flying. And oh, the, and my this gosh. little fellow was a very meek fellow, was talking on the board, and poor guy was just, they were just, it was like one of the sh movies I've seen where the kids are going crazy. And, oh, my gosh. And I said, I went back and I go, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Why did you want that? I knew it was my last chance. Oh my so God. I thought it's my last chance. It's a familiar spot to mm -hmm. the school. And so I had to go in and I had to be <coughs> so strict. Strict. And I said, as soon as I went in, I would wait for them to be quiet. And I would say, as long as it takes for you to be quiet for me to begin is as long as we'll stay after class. And so uh -huh. I would start, and if anyone, t I said, well, if anyone, you know, like, I, first I would say that they'd have to, they had a minute or whatever. Right. I, they have a minute after class or whatever, and then they'd say, um, if someone would talk, and I'd say, well, I'm sorry, your minute starts over, that they had to stay after class, you know, after they got the punishment. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, this probably didn't make sense how I'm telling the story. No, it does. They got the punishment. Yeah. And so then what would happen was it was like a miracle. They would gang up on each other for oh, speaking. yeah. So now it kind of took it off. Right. Of they blame each other. I don't know how it worked, but, I mean, it worked. Yeah. And uh, No, that happens with my kids. Yeah. So it was, it, so I ended up at the end of that semester, uh, several algebra books had scrawled in Lewis as a blankety blank, but I had them under control. <laughs> oh my gosh. And the, and the parents actually started asking for me because I had control of my classroom. I would call parents Well, and initially. they probably learned also. And they learned. And, right. And we actually developed wonderful <clears throat> relationships. But there was one guy one time that he was really not happy in my class and I felt like I needed to talk to him. He was very hostile. Mm. And so I took him into a room and talked to him separately during my office hour. And he said that I made him so mad with my rules and rigid that if he had a gun, he would have pulled it out. Oh, my I gosh. I mean, back That's in the day, scary. this was before they had yeah. all this awful stuff happening at right, school. Right, right. And so um, I remember I don't get scared easily. I know. And I, sh I didn't get scared, and so it... I'm kind of a fool that way. And I just kept talking to him. And after that, he was like perfect in class. Aww. And we, be, we began to be like friends for years. 
Oh. It was really a success story. That's awesome. So I was very lucky. Always I've been lucky. All of this is total luck. It's never been anything that I know that I'm brilliant well, about it. Well, no, it's you just, are so kind and you have such a love for people. I do, and but I, I also do not be a victim. You are not a victim and you don't put up with BS. No. <laughs> I do not, in a classroom, I'm very strict. I know, I know, and, but you're that way like with your kids, yeah. and you know, you're just kind of a no-nonsense Nelly. I don't know. Well, I know. Uh, but that's good, you know, because people respect that. I think they, kids, they understand the rules. Kids want it. They have to have that, some structure. And that's why they act out. I mean, yeah. it's, they really do want that, they want the structure. they want the They structure. want the rules, they want the guidelines. Yeah. They resist because they're learning. Yeah. You know, that's why they resist, but that they Absolutely. really want that. And I, parents, they do want that. Yeah. Parents need to know that. Parents, you need to know that. No, yeah, just par parents. I'm not very great at instilling the rules at home, but I was really good at really? doing it in my class. No, I'm such a, I'm kind of a pushover. Really? You yeah. seem like you could be a pushover. I am a little, am bit. A little sometimes, bit. sometimes, no. Oh yeah, okay. sometimes, sometimes no. no, but you know, I also have a really good open relationship with my kids. Yeah. So that's, that you have a great, you're a great. That mom. makes me happy. So if I'm yes. a little bit of a pushover, I think you're doing it just right. Well, thanks. You know, I think we all do the best we can with what yeah. we know and, and with the just thing what is, feels right for us. Cause it's not, it's like parenting. I think it's like teaching. There's just not one way to have it work well. You right. Know? There's so many ways to, right. to teach something and have it be great and to have someone learn. Right. And, and there's just not one structured way for any of those right. things. So, well, that can carry over. We can talk about your kids because you have three of them. Uh -huh. And speaking of, they're all very different. Oh and so, my gosh. Right. So I know different. because I know a lot about them. I'm going to put this up. Don't, don't pound on here because. Oh, I've been pounding on there. I know. So don't pound on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have our little microphone right here. Oh, um, there's, you know, just like with teaching, there's different learning styles. Yeah. And, and so like parenting and kids, like we know there's different um, learning styles with our, our own children. Yeah, so, absolutely. you know, I know your kids are all super different. And so different. how did you manage that with them growing up? I guess we're going to trail into, well, I want to get back to the math, but we're talking okay. about this now. Um, well, they were just all different from the get-go, and um, I don't know, I just think you have to, although we have standard rules in the house, right? Um, everybody had to do wet one, dry ones. That's, you go take a wet paper towel in the kitchen, and you wipe up 15 spots, and you dry them. Oh. Everyone had to do that. <laughs> so that, my kids That now, was a chore? They, that was a chore, and they all remember wet ones, dry ones, and now they do it. Oh my gosh, that <laughs> is hilarious. So funny. So we had things that everybody had the same rules. Right. But as far as each kid was so different. I mean, Mark, my son, he was like the easiest child in the whole world. I mean, he was self entertaining. He, I mean, at 10, he wanted me to take him to the college to um, get a <laughs> physics book <laughs> oh to read gosh. on his own. <laughs> I mean, he's like so brilliant. You know, Mark is so brilliant. Hold on really and, quick. Okay. You can keep talking about Mark. Okay. So, well, uh, Mark, I remember someone's, I said to my husband, he's so smart. I, I just don't know where it came from. And my husband said, well, you, we all know it came from me. <laughs> and, I, and I said to my husband. I know what you said. You know what I said, don't you? I think it came from me. No. <laughs> oh, I said, said, I don't know. You didn't even get that question right. <laughs> Gosh, you are so funny. <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> and so I got him on that one. Uh, but no, he was, so he was like, you know, I didn't have to do anything with him. And then uh, the only thing I had to really do with all three kids, they were all had some sort of activity that really, we were really busy with three different directions of activities. But then my daughter, uh, Courtney, my oldest daughter, she is a pretty much of a rule follower. So she's, you know, she's kind of, you'd always want her on your team because she's just, it's easy to be around that way. You right. know? And so um, as long as we don't get into everybody's political views, you oh, know, no. the kids are we all don't have to the do kids that. are all different. <laughs> but um, yeah, so so she was really pretty easy kid too. And then Lindsay, sorry, that's okay. Lindsay uh, was my. Um, she's Lindsay's the youngest. She's the middle. Oh wait, no, Lindsay's your son the is the youngest. He's the youngest. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So I went youngest, oldest, now middle. Okay. 
And so Lindsay is my very talented, creative soul. Yeah. That she beats to her own drum. What is that saying? Yeah, beats to her own drum. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, like for example, I would teach her rubber stamping techniques and there would like a brayer roller. I would show her, oh, you can mark on the brayer roller and then roll it, you know, yeah. with the marker and look at the pattern you get. She would never try anything I suggested. She would do her own thing. And so I would get ideas from her for my art classes. Oh, that's I would, cool. I mean, I would just encourage her. Yeah. What do you want to do with this, Lindsay? <laughs> you know, because she, I'm telling you, the kid is never out of ideas yeah. and always totally original. And so, and she's always had the art talent. So we've, you know, always had that connection yeah. with the art. And, um, but she's also, a, a, was a little looser in her, um, approach to life <laughs> so that could that could be a little challenging sometimes right. but um uh, I, I lost my train i thought i was going to say something about her with her ah i lost it it keep That's talking okay. and it, it'll probably come back but yeah. anyway so she so they were all different and i just really handled them how did i handle them each individually right so where i thought i was giving each of my three children loving them the same, giving them all basic rules the same, but treating them each individual because of their individualities. I thought I was like a perfect mom. And then I kind of find out later, well, you kind of let her get away with this. and blah, blah. <laughs> so, so I do find out that sometimes the view on the situation seems unfair to others. It can be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I get along so good with all three children. I know you do. I have a great relationship. And like in the with end, them. that's really what matters. That's what matters. They yeah. all, you know, I connect to all three right. of them. But it is interesting to hear their point of view of the childhood. Right. And they all know they had great, you know, situations. Right, right. But um, different views. Is it hard for you to hear how they felt about things when they were younger? No, I always think it's funny. Oh, good. I mean, they have they make fun of me. Yeah. You know, like my sayings and stuff, and then I hear them. Oh gosh, I I can't. Oh I know my, my kids are gonna do that to me. I know. It's so it. I crack up. Mark and Lindsay are always totally making fun of me, <laughs> and I just like. I just think it's so funny. It is so, funny. It's yeah. funny to hear. You know what. I don't know. But they're picking up on. Yes. You know, yeah, what, yeah. what I say or whatever I do. And then they, and then you kind of listen in on them, you know, and you say, ah, but, but look what they're doing that, you know, that I taught them. And look what they're saying that I taught them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So it's all in a loving way. Yeah. So I really appreciate it a lot. Right. They don't ever tease me in a mean way. It's always in a loving, right. fun way. Yeah. Well, and you're always such a, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, you like to laugh and have a good time. I do. So it's okay to joke around. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and life yeah. is, you, you got to be able to laugh at life. Even like the moments that were really hard, you know, it's good to be able to laugh at them later. Absolutely. You know? I mean, through very hard times is what got me through them, you know? And, yeah. And I think the one thing, like I am very good humored and I really do love to laugh and I think that saves me with everything, you know, right. with, with health, whatever. Yeah. But, um. One thing I cannot tolerate is a lack of respect. Mm. So that would be where I would draw the line if it were my kids, you know, which happened occasionally when right. I might, might might not appreciate <clears throat> some behavior yeah. that I felt was disrespectful. Boy, I would have to nip that in the bud right, right away. Right. I have to agree with you on yeah. that. And so, you know, we joke around a lot in our house. And so I think sometimes the kids don't know what, what the boundary is. Right. You know, and so if, they say something and I'm like, whoa, and they think, well, I was just joking. Well, mm -hmm. okay, but like that was a little too far. Yeah, I mean, you know, so that's, that's the hard thing about joking with kids. I think they well, don't, they yeah. don't always know. Well, they're under construction and they're learning by what you're doing. <laughs> We're all under construction forever. But kids, kids. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So anyway. you, you just mentioned, um, your, how your laughter has, you know, kind of gotten you through life. And you said in health, mm -hmm. a lot of people may not know your, Oh, I, I, I don't mind telling that, um, I, that in, um, 2010, mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with, with a cancer and it was assumed I would probably not make it more than six months. I mean, I was in really bad shape. Right. And so I went, underwent chemo and I had to, of course, quit working. And I just remember that was the hardest thing was standing 
up at the humanity building and or, or the human resources. I always get those mixed up. I know, that's okay. <laughs> and I, um, overlooking the campus and thinking I'll never teach there again and it just killed oh. me. That was one of, the, one of the hardest things. I mean, the hardest thing was family and stuff. Right, that right. Was, that was a very hard thing. And then so I went through chemo and that was extremely hard. And I, oh, I was able to get into remission. And so that was 10 years ago, and I've been in remission since. And so, um, you know, I've felt great and been doing well, and surprise, I'm still here. <laughs> That's so, I mean, and yeah. what, um, how did you, because you weren't feeling well, right? Oh, my gosh. You yes. weren't feeling well for a while, and yes. so. Oh, how did I find out I had Yeah, it? because um, I know that, I remember that story was. I was having, um, getting pains in my legs, like at Thanksgiving, I was standing there cooking, and I got these pains in my legs, and I said, you guys, I don't think I can keep cooking. I'm going to have to lay down. And so then I went to the doctor the next day, and they found blood clots up my legs. Oh. So they put me on a Coumadin okay. to thin. Blood thinner. And then I, st I didn't feel like it had helped. So I kept going back saying, you know, I don't think the Coumadin, but your, but your blood is the proper thinness. It can't be any thinner. It, you can't have any blood clots. And I'd go back home and I'd come back and I'd say, you know, I, don't, I think I still have the same problem. Finally, a, a doctor that was the partner of the one I went to said, look, I'm going to send you back over to the hospital, but I'm going to tell you they're not going to find anything. And I went over there and their eyes started rolling and they said, oh, um, this is serious, you know. Oh. So they started taking the tests for the cancer. Because mm. I guess they really hadn't, you have to do certain tests for cancer. Right. So the cancer markers they hadn't really tested for. Oh. So then that, and maybe like the markers that might like white blood cells or something, maybe those ones weren't coming up on the, you know, like if you were doing just regular blood work? I don't know. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I think regular there are some work, like yeah. little red flags that they see yeah. and then they go to further testing, but those right. those earlier flags must not have been yeah, popping up. Yeah, they must up. not have been popping up. And so anyway, I was there in the hospital, you know, really um, in a bad way. And the doctor was so nice that had assumed I wasn't gonna have a problem. Mm, yeah. Of course he was just you know probably felt awful. Felt awful. Yeah. And I loved really loved that doctor. I ended up switching to him and and uh, so he, he was great through all of that. And <clears throat> and at home I just remember you know chemo is different for everyone because there's all different chemos and stuff. And I did not my body did not take to it well. Mm. And so five minutes for me would seem like hours. It was like, oh my gosh, just let me go now because right. it was so miserable. Yeah. And I just kept hanging in because of family. <clears throat> you know, just saying, instead of just kind of giving up, you know. And, right. And so everybody was just so encouraging and so great. I mean, that's when you really feel loved. I yeah. Mean, you really felt more love than I've ever felt, you know. I'm sure. And, well, and yeah. you're kind of like the rock in your family. I know. So if mom's not true. well, everybody is going to be tough. there to try to make sure mom gets well. Yeah, it, it was hard. And my son would come and cook, and that was always sweet. And did yeah. anybody live at the house with you? Any of the no kids? They were all out at that time. They were they were all out. And um, Courtney and Lindsay, I think, were living together in an apartment. And then Mark was away at school. He mm. had to come back. He was on an internship. Oh. And he asked Bill, do you think I should come back? Do you think it's that serious? And Dad said, I think you got to come back. And so he left oh his my internship. Gosh. And so he came out. So he would come and bring me lunches at chemo when I was having the chemo. Oh. And he would come and cook, you know, things that I could eat. And, and uh, you know, the girls would, you know, walk with me or help me. It's going to stop recording. Let me reset it. I kind of went on and on. You can cut a lot of that out That's anyway. That's okay. So you, have to, you just have to cut me off because I just... No, 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 I, no it's my okay. Stories, my I, stories will be too long. I want to know. But I do want to say that when we went to the hospital, whenever we went in to see the doctor or go to chemo, Bill would keep me laughing. Aww. And that was a saving grace. I mean, I don't know. People had to wonder, how can they be out there laughing or laughing in the office here? when this is such a dire situation. And we would just always have, he just kept me laughing, he was so funny. Laugh, they say, laughter is the best medicine. I know. Wasn't that in the Reader's Digest? I loved that I section. I I think was, it was like, yeah. laughter is the best medicine. And they were, I remember always reading those jokes in Reader's I Digest. I loved that, <laughs> so isn't that funny? Fun. I even, they were always around like my house and my, my grandparents' house. Yeah. I grew up with those. Uh, you, you're, you're making me think, I have another friend 
who has had cancer twice. Oh. She's a, just a couple years older than me, but um, the second one was pretty serious. Mm -hmm. And her husband, which, well, she had to have surgery to have a, mm. some things removed. But um, her husband would come in while she was recovering in her bed. He'd come in dressed up in different costumes. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> and that's so he great. would come in, you know, to make her laugh. That's and it's so really, neat. she says the same thing. It's kind of what got her through. Yes. And she's doing really well now too. Wow. You know, so I think that's great. having that, you know, positive outlook on life really, I think has a lot to do with our health. I so like big. our mental, because our mental health, I think ultimately maybe is the most important health. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I think it just affects your physical health so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I see that with you because I know you've been in other pains since your cancer. You've, you've survived the cancer, but it's still affecting your body all these years later. Yeah. And you would never know that you're still in pain today. Well, it causes the, the, the uh, chemo from the first treatment for me, my feet started to go numb. Oh. And it caught, I, I got neuropathy. And it just was worse with every treatment until my hands and feet oh. would be numb and burny. And so um, the Neurontin, which is a medication for it, I was allergic to. So I couldn't take that. So they put me on a oh stronger gosh. thing. Oh. And so I'm on a stronger, I'm on Lyric I mean, I don't care who knows. It's not for everybody because it can make a lot of people feel terrible. But it took care of my pain to make it livable. Yeah. And so, although I'll never get over that nerve, you know, the nerve damage that was caused right. from it. Um, I'm, I'm much more comfortable now. So I'm so glad. I still have a lot of issues, like you know, little issues, but it's like, things could be so much worse. Right. So, yeah. So I don't have any complaints and I'm just happy You're, to, happy to be here. And happy I it's know. been so long. <laughs> I know. Did you, during that time? So, okay, let's go back to college. Because you retired recently, I know you loved that job, I loved and it. I have, was friends with you while you worked there, mm -hmm. and I was friends with you as you were deciding to retire, and you would decide to retire, and then no, I'm going to stay <laughs> yeah, a little I'll bit stay longer. Another year, <laughs> yeah, and it was really hard for you to leave. So mm -hmm. you, but let's let the audience know you went from high school to Cal State Fullerton, and so you. Oh well, up, I went from high school to community college at Mount San Antonio College. Oh, okay. Then from San Antonio College. To Cal State okay, Fullerton. I went to Cal State Fullerton, yes. Okay. And Cal State Fullerton, I mean, you just loved that job. I loved that job. I, w I mean, I went to there as a student, and then I was able to get a job there, which all, again, I've just been so lucky. A lot of this has been, so what got me there was a teacher that I had. Mm -hmm. So I had been teaching high school for two years. Okay. But then I was off because of having my baby. Okay. So he called and asked, well, <clears throat> would you like to teach a class for us part-time? Oh, perfect. And so I went, I thought, that would be great to have a little out. For, yeah. You know, a little ab adult A couple hours time. here and there. Yeah. yeah. So my mom would come and babysit, and I would go and teach. Uh, I was teaching the class that taught elementary school teachers math. Yeah. And that could be very creative. I could do some art activities. I have a lot of math art oh. things that they can actually use in the you know in the so you were using art in your math oh, classes yeah, yeah. oh so my gosh much. I had no idea yeah and um, I love teaching that and then they gave me more classes and pretty soon you know I'm teaching two or three classes and it's almost like you're full, full time. time yeah so I'm teaching there and loving it and then some full-time opportunities came up which is unusual because you typically to be full-time at the you know the big college, you have to have a PhD. Right. Did not have a PhD, I had a master's. And by okay. the way, through this, I got my master's there and everything. And so, um, yeah, I loved uh, that I got a job there full time that was pretty much almost like a tenured position. Right. Uh, although you don't call it that, but it was, I had a pretty much guarantee. They told me you'll be here as long as, long as, you, as you want, want to. Yeah. And so I was there till I retired and I had that wonderful full time. And I had a wonderful opportunities for working on various grants. And I mean, it was just like I was PhD person. Right. Because I got to develop their training program for the college teachers. Right. So that training program is still um, in action today. Yeah, that's and pretty with, impressive. With one of my students leading it. <clears throat> oh, that's so yeah. awesome. So that was awesome. So that anyway, is really yeah, it awesome. It was a great job. The yeah. Best. How do you feel now that you have retired? Are you glad you've retired? Or do you, are I you missing I am so... It? 
I have not had one day of regret. <laughs> Well, your first year, I mean, I don't know how many workshops you went to because you were at every single one here. I know. And then on top of that, you were going to other ones at other places. I was traveling too. To I go. know. I know. I I just love the workshop. I love the in-person workshops. I know you do. And um, yeah, so I, I thought when we stopped doing that with the COVID that I might, you know, one of the reasons I don't feel terrible about that right now is because of you inviting me to teach here. Because oh, that's kind of filled, yeah. filled my void for the desire to teach because I still get to do some teaching because teaching is my biggest love. I know. Yeah. You're amazing at it. Oh, thank you. You are. I you're such it. a, you're just so generous and giving and supportive and encouraging and, you know, you give feedback in a nice way and, you know, so you, people want to keep, keep going and keep learning it. and keep trying new things. You know, I'm so glad. I, I mean, feel safe with you. Well, they are safe with me. I know, but that's what a good teacher does. And I love learning from them. Yeah. You know, I learn so much from my students. I right. mean, I don't think, I think everything that they post, sometimes they're very nervous about posting things. I think I'm inspired by every, every post I see. There's something that inspires me. I mean, everybody has something to share and something to give. Yeah. And right? sometimes they'll post and it's like, you know, we're making little clay things and little clay faces that aren't very smooth. And they'll say, oh, I can't, you know, you got your smooth, mine is not smooth. And I'm just going, God, that looks really cool with those textures. I got to do some of those, you know. It's like everything I see is so inspiring. Gives you a new idea. It does. Yeah. I'm going to steal all their ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and that's the thing, too. I think that, like, sometimes people are afraid to teach or do an online class because they're afraid to share all their ways yeah. and ideas with people. But... The truth of the matter is, is if you're doing, I don't want to say doing things the right way, because it's not a right way, but um, you're constantly growing and trying mm -hmm. new things. And by the time somebody is going to maybe teach about, you know, these little faces, if, if let's say somebody's like, oh, I want to do a little class on faces, you know, you're already going to be on to doing something else. Right. I always have, there's always new ideas. Right. It's always fun. And I get bored doing the same thing, although I haven't got bored of the little faces. I know, but you're, you're already expanding on them. You're yeah. giving them masks or you're having a tongue stick out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So you've already moved on. Which the tongue sticking from, out. I want one of those. Well, I'm working on it. Oh, yay. And that is, I haven't started. Oh, oh my gosh. And, um, you know, that was an idea from one of my students. Oh. Or one of the artists. Right. I don't even like to call them my students because they're just they're artists. artists. That's right, artists. right. And uh, she does a lot of little faces with the. Oh my gosh, her name I is saw Tina Lurleen on there. And she oh does my gosh. a lot of little tongue faces. Well, Tina, so I love Thank the you. tongue sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's so fun. They're all so much fun. I mean, I'm just looking at them in here and I, I just love this little bowl of these little guys. I, I They're all love so them. much fun. I'm and so then, glad like, you Deb love them. Weirs. Oh my gosh. And then her influence in, in the faces has been yeah. so much fun. And it's been really fun. I mean, you have really inspired a lot of people. Oh, I'm so glad. You know, <laughs> you really have. It's been, it's been really fun because to I've watch. I've received so much inspiration that it's wonderful to feel like it's going both ways a yeah. little bit here. And um, I just. Uh, I keep losing my train of thought. You're saying I know, me too. You were saying something about the little faces. Um, oh, I was going to talk about how this has turned into another new idea, but I don't probably shouldn't talk about that yet, huh? Oh no, you'll have to save that because okay. that'll that'll be coming out in all right in a class in the future, okay. right? Yeah, and I was going to say when I <laughs> she's so excited already, you I guys. So oh my god! I look forward. To it. I just want to spill my guts all about. It. <laughs> no, don't. Okay, no, but just I won't. Kidding. I know. I got to listen to you. But I remember when I taught uh, rubber stamping at Stampa Barbara. Yeah. Um, that I would teach six classes in a weekend. Right. So then I would need to develop six more new ones. Oh. And six more new ones. Yeah. Because I taught twice, and that some of them I could duplicate because people would want to come to some right. really hits like again. So, um, but I ended up developing over a hundred classes, and I and I never worried that people would come, and because they were. The people would come from stores all over the United States. Wow. And they would then go and teach them in their rubber stamp stores. And I never worried about that because I always thought, oh, that's good. i got to come up with something new. And so that's how I look at it. And if 
at this point I'm such an old lady that you know hey if I'm not coming up with something new it's time to bow out anyway <laughs> let the youngins take over maybe but I mean I don't know I'm still having fun so. you are and you're always coming up with new ideas and no. that's why I mean that is the true way to be successful is to keep coming up yeah, with new ideas I think so too you know and how do you keep coming up with new ideas? I mean, you're constantly looking at being inspired by other people. Absolutely. You take little bits and, you know, try something new. Put them new in your own way. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what it's all about. I really think the important thing is that you do, you know, of course we can inspire for every, by everybody, but that you do put it into a form that is your own. Yeah. You know, own, own thumbprint. Right. Yeah, that's the, I mean, I don't think it's great to just copy something straight no but I think that when you're learning it's okay to do that absolutely. right and then absolutely. and I know um, uh, you know it comes up all the time in our communities in our art communities online people want to know how do I find that how do I get to that and you know sometimes it takes time but I think at first yeah you copy but then you absolutely. gotta start taking a risk let me try something that's a little bit different mm -hmm. you know and maybe if, if it's a clay face well Kathy taught me this I'm going to try putting some hair on it or I'm going to try putting yeah. some lips on it or if I was taking you know. this class for the first time I would make all of them identical to what the teacher yeah. did. I mean that's what I do. I know you do. And then because, I would but start you're learning playing. The, you're getting the skills and the tools yeah. and then, then you get good at manipulation with right. your, your clays and so yeah so yeah I totally totally agree with you copying copy 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 and then you know branch out. Take some risks. Yeah. You can do it. Absolutely. I wonder if there's any, oh, we still have a little bit of time. Um, let's see, what else did I want to ask you? We talked about your family. We talked about cancer. I didn't even have that on my list, but I think that's such an, it. well, it's such a great story because when you told me that, I was just like, I mean, did, did you, you just seem to love life so much. Like I do. You and I mean, more than almost anybody I know. Really? <laughs> yes. You love life. You you just are so happy. You're like a little kid. You get excited about every single that thing, I feel like. you know. Were you like that before you got sick? I think I've always kind of been like that. I've yeah. always been relaxed and enjoyed life. And, um, and, I, and I, I keep saying it, I've always been lucky. I just feel like I... I've Maybe been, you've been lucky because you are such a positive being. I don't know, because I know? think positive beings can have some pretty bad luck, too. Yeah. I mean, I had bad luck. Well, you like, did have yeah, that bad luck, yeah, but I true. mean, maybe... And I was eating right and everything, so that was yeah. strange, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I've always been... Really enjoyed life. My mom... Um, you do, we're going to ask about... I know, I was, I know so this said, is I'm a great ask, segue into yeah. your mom. Um, my mom basically... My mom and dad divorced when I was young. And then they actually got back together. And then they, they divorced. Did? They divorced. Oh my again. gosh, that's so funny. And I did not like for my parents to be split up. Kids never do. Right. And so I didn't like that at all. But he stayed in my life for the most part until I was grown. Then then he actually uh, left the country for a little while and then came back. But um, my mom was so, she was an amazing influence in my life. Mm -hmm. She was, she instilled such confidence in me. Mm-hmm. I think that was the best gift she ever gave me. And so I think she always made me feel so valued and so special. Mm -hmm. Probably maybe a little too special because sometimes maybe I think, oh yeah, I'm a little special. I don't have to do that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she was really an amazing mom. And, you know, we didn't have money. And uh, we lived in an apartment and we lived in a trailer for a while, a little trailer out in the middle of nowhere. And so I had pretty humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. And my husband had very humble beginnings because he was a fam from a family of 10. Oh my gosh. And they lived in a made over chicken coop. What? So they lived, they had about five kids in one room. I mean, they were really poor. Oh. And so my husband, I met him when I was in high school. And my mom, I remember my mom, said to him, my mom was a jokester. She was just a jokester. And she said, I don't know if we're gonna let you date my my daughter with that long hair you have. <laughs> and he had, you know, it was when they were wearing it really long. And uh, I wasn't really very interested in him. And so that night when we went out, he thought it was the last date he got to have because my, what my mom said. <laughs> and so he said to me, 
really sad long face and saying long goodbye and I'm really kind of inside think, saying oh thank goodness I don't have to dump him you know <laughs> he thinks he's out of the picture now <laughs> and I was going away to my friends for an overnight so I went to my friends and I'm thinking gosh that was easy it's all done now I'm not interested in him and so then I get back from the weekend and he's gone over to my mom's and wanted to talk to her because he really has a lot of feelings for her daughter <laughs> and they ended up having a, a little drink together <laughs> and I'm saying thanks mom now what am I going to do he's back in my world now so I just continued dating him I just continued dating him and uh I mean it was cut we had a rough start because then he had to go he was he was going to get drafted oh so when he kind of went away for those things I thought well he's gone again and I'll go to a um I'll go to a whatever it was prom or whatever with another fella and then he comes back I'm like oh well um <laughs> then we just kind of I just got to appreciate him more and more he just grew and grew on me and yeah. so I'm so glad that that happened and I, that I married he's, him he's, he's a good guy I know I love <laughs> Bill I love him so much and he's so funny <laughs> yeah so thank goodness he was patient and like again I was lucky and got to you got him. lucky yeah well, so did he. Well, maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And so your mom, um, I know you guys were really close. And did you have her around for a long time? Well, she passed away when she was about 69. She had rheumatoid, uh, whatever, the, some sort of heart fever when she was young. Okay. And so she developed heart problems and her heart got like twice as big as it should be. And oh. <clears throat> she had to open heart surgery and that was a mess. And finally her final heart, open heart surgery was up north at a famous hospital. I can't even remember the name of because I'm terrible at those details. But she um, passed away on the table there. Mm. It was a time that I was actually, as close as we were, I was relieved because I knew that it was she was in such a bad way yeah and so I was relieved for her to be out of her pain you know right and she's just with me every day I mean the girls remember her so well my, my son not as well but they they always say you sound like grandma when you say that oh my gosh but, so yeah we we loved grandma Aww. she was a character yeah she would I mean she you've had, shared with me some stories I don't know if you can share them on here but I know you have some funny stories about her <laughs> well I can say we flew to to Las Vegas six times one summer oh Oh my gosh. Just for the day. <laughs> Just to play blackjack. Oh my gosh. I'm oh sorry. my gosh. That oh my is so that funny. We had a blast. That is hilarious. We had a lot of fun So together. she liked to gamble, huh? She loved to, but she didn't have like a problem. No, I know. But she loved to, and she also taught me how to play poker. Oh, that's so she'd I love have, poker. She'd have poker games with all of my friends. Oh. All, all the boys loved her. Because that she, is was, so fun. she was I love a poker. fun person. Aww. But she was a little, a little on the wild side in some ways. But yet, I mean, I was like the most conservative kid in the world. I'm telling you. I really? was a rule follower. I was never loose. I wasn't. A, didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't go out and fool around. I mean, I was like straight as an arrow. So she obviously had rules in place. I mean, right. she, she was the same thing about respect and certain right. rules. But she liked to have fun too. Oh. But you know, she was did everything. I think was okay. The yeah, way she did it. Yeah. Well, just to hear you talk about her, obviously you had fun. Yeah. You have great memories, and you loved her a lot. I loved her a lot. Yeah. She's still with me all the time because I know just exactly how she'd react to things and oh my gosh. what she'd say. That's so funny. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. We're lucky. I, I love my mom too. Oh, you have the best parents. I love your relationship with your parents. <laughs> They're awesome. They are pretty awesome. I feel pretty lucky. Well, we only have a few minutes left. Okay. So I wanted to talk about oh. Molly and Dragon. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Kathy loves dogs. Oh. She has a huge love for dogs. Oh, and yes. if you are familiar with her art, she um, has even done commissions for other people. You made, made lots some of dogs. Really <laughs> special. She's made some really special dogs for friends, and uh, so tell us about how this love for your, how dogs happen. Well, I've always loved all animals. 
And um, I had I got a puppy when I was a kid, and I guys got a real bond with that little dog. And so I've always wanted to have a dog in my life, but my daughter, Courtney, was allergic. Oh, that's right, because I was going to ask yeah. if you had dogs with the kids growing up. No, we couldn't. That's so, right. As soon as Courtney moved out, I came home with a puppy for Mark. Oh, my god! And Mark was just to die of happiness. Oh. But I was just to die because I just got a new carpet and this little <laughs> dog. And I'm just going, what have I done? And I even said to Mark, look, I'll get you a new computer if you'll let me give the dog away. <laughs> I mean, I was, he just said, go away, Mom. He just needed oh to flag me gosh. off. And uh, a puppy is a big commitment. It's a baby. But I'm telling you, that was the best dog. Oh. And I have felt that way about every single puppy. Yeah. Every single puppy, I'm going, what have I done? I know. But I have never felt more that way about a puppy than Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You were pretty sorry about oh him for a while. Gosh. He was the hardest dog ever. And I'm telling you, we are crazy about he's that dog. He's so cute. He's so cute and he's so fine and he's so good it's at these times when other dogs are not good yeah he's an amazing little guy but he's such a like he's got so much strength yeah but you know he's he's getting a lot of discipline and he's getting a lot he's starting to respect his owners yes you know, so he's starting to understand that right who's in charge uh -huh. and he's just just a good boy he doesn't we thought he was going to eat molly because he, he would latch onto her and not yeah. let go and Dogs kind of play that way though, because Billy no, and Buster, they, oh. No, no, this was like serious. I mean, you could see the distress in Molly's eyes. Oh. And we were distressed because we couldn't get them probably away. Right, right. <clears throat> and so um, we were afraid we might have to give them up. But we learned, we, thank goodness we had good trainer. Right. We learned about um, we need to have some rules. Mm. And one is Molly can get on the couch and he can't. The oh, rules don't have to be the same. Right. It's just like with your own children. And so <laughs> he understands exactly that um, he doesn't get to be on the couch. So she knows it's her safety zone. Oh. And so they don't have, they, and she has actually a room at the guest room <laughs> where she has her own condo. Oh. And if she wants to be away from him, she can... has to go to her condo. Oh. And he knows he can't go in the condo. Oh Even though gosh. he's standing at the door. Yeah. And he can see the toys of hers he really wants that he doesn't get to play with. He'll stay there and he'll just stare at him. And he, you know, he's a good boy. Wow. Yeah, he's doing really good. That's amazing. So, and he's not given her any fits since that. Oh, those times. that's good. I'm he, so glad. He hasn't been mean to her. So um, he's learned the best yeah. place in the family, I think. And we're crazy for that guy. He's I know. such a doll. Yeah. Yeah, when you guys came by the studio that day with the both of them. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. He's cute, isn't he? He's, he's so got the cute. warmest eyes. I know. <laughs> and Molly, she's so cute too. She, everyone loves Molly. And then your daughter, Lindsay, has Molly's brother yeah. for her pet, Dexter. Has Dexter. And he's yeah. a doll. He's the best looking Jack Russell I've ever seen. He's really cute. Yeah, he is. And then your son has three dogs? He has three dogs. <laughs> yeah. He and what kind of dogs, dogs? What kind of dogs does he have? He has a Sheltie. He has, what are the other dogs? I can't ever remember the name. But like, more like the Australian Shepherd type right. dogs or something. Beautiful dogs. Yeah, he has, uh, they're, the two of them are rescue. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So he does rescue dogs now, which is great, and that's what I would do next. Yeah. Um, my my Jack Russell is not a rescue, but right. I would I would rescue next because now that I understand about rescues and the importance of placing them, right, and what good dogs they are. Yeah. You know that I mean, you just find the best dogs that you know best know. relationships, and so I would I would look for that. But so Mark is. Yeah, I can't believe he has three dogs. <laughs> we just went and saw him last weekend. Yeah. Oh, I saw a little video. So I was going to, and did you, you bring your dogs to visit? Oh, so yeah. So did all the dogs get along? Yeah. I mean, sometimes they gang up a little on Dragon. Right. And he get he gets grumpy if they do that. And so yeah. then we have to intervene a little. Right. And then they take a break and then they start up playing again. So yeah. They do, they do really well. They play and they love to swim together. Oh. So they so come all over. of the dogs swim? Um, let's see. Mark has one dog that doesn't. Okay. But so four of the dogs swim. And Dexter swims. Dexter loves to swim. I wish our dogs would swim. Oh my gosh, they love to swim. Billy will get in the water with us. Like you can hold oh, her in there okay. and she won't fight you. But she doesn't want to like, you know, swim around. Oh. They only do it because they want to go after toys. Ah. Uh, see, it took nine years 
for Molly to even swim. She's only, or maybe it was. Eight. I think I remember you posted a video of like the first time she finally got in. We couldn't believe it, and it was because Mark brought over a toy she couldn't resist. <laughs> And she just jumped in and went for that toy, and since then, that she's a so swimmer. Funny. Yeah. Do um, so. Do they have like stuffed animal toys? They do. Do they, they rip those apart? Yes. Okay, our dogs do that too. It drives me insane. Yes. And then there's just fuzz everywhere. Sometimes it'll yes. be all in the front yard. Or they get the squeakers out. Oh yeah, watch. they love getting those squeakers out. They and then they'll take it. even the little tiny piece out of the squeaker. I know. We right? Have to like really the little watch. whistle. Yes. Okay, I our don't dogs want them do to that too. It, I you know. know. I'm but sure we get those have... snakes for them a lot because they love to tug. Oh, yeah. And so they rip those up, so I have to buy quantities of them. I know. And then Molly has a little stuffed alien. She loves it. And she doesn't rip that apart. She doesn't until at one point she'll start little corners off it. But she, those last a long time with her. Okay. But little dragon, he loves those so much that he he doesn't care how shredded they are. So Bill had picked up all his toys so that when he came in, I don't know, he, he won't go outside because he wants to play with his toys. Right. So anyway, so he comes in and he finds a little strip of that toy that came off. He just comes in holding it, wanting Bill to tug with him. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, sometimes you just gets to your heart. Oh my like, gosh. I don't care if I don't have anything. I can play with the string. You want a tug? <laughs> oh gosh, Billy, um, our puppy, the, the young one, she's, oh, she's one. so cute. Oh my gosh. She'll go through, because we have like a picket fence, you know, around yeah. our house. She'll stick her head through and get a twig from the tree oh. that's on, like on the other side of the fence, <laughs> pull it off, and then bring it over. And then her and Buster will fight over that twig oh. and play tug of war with it. And oh, that's the same so thing. Fun. I know they do the same thing. It's so yeah, funny just finding fun. anything to um, to play. This has been so fun. This has been so fun. I loved it. I loved it too. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming Thank and for, you for being my friend. You too. <laughs> um, but just, I appreciate you doing this and and sharing about your life and and more personal things such as your family and your health and your dogs and. I think next time I should interview you. Oh. <laughs> okay. I want to hear more about you. Well, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> that would be fun. I mean, I'm kind of an open book, you yeah, know. I'll I know, tell I I'll tell that. you just about anything. And I sometimes like Jeff gets mad at me and he's like, "Why did you have to tell that?" I'm like, "Well, if I said anything I shouldn't, you got to cut it out." <laughs> I know. I don't think you did. <laughs> okay. Um, well, this was so fun okay. and um for those of you that don't know, Kathy has two classes on our um network. She's got the What's the bird one called? Fat, fat, fat and Happy Birds. <laughs> fat and Happy Birds. And then she has Little Bowl of Beings. So the Fat and Happy Birds, she teaches you how to make three different birds, mm -hmm. a crow, an owl, and a bird with a human face. And then in Little Bowl of Beings, you learn to make five different little clay faces. They are just amazing. People have had so much fun. And I mean, it's almost every day somebody new is signing up for the class. They just, it's, it's really fun. It's been really fun. And she has uh, some new classes that we'll be, we're going to be filming in yeah. a couple months, a couple more classes. Can't wait. So. Surprises. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no telling. Okay, oh, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try. I'll <laughs> try. Um, but uh, there is a code at the beginning of the podcast. So if you miss that, you can get a discount on her class or mm -hmm. another class. And, Good deal. Um, we just uh, thank you for listening, and Kathy, thank yes, you thank for you being so here. And I'm excited for our lunch. next. Yeah, <laughs> excited for lunch. All right, everybody, have a great day, okay. and we hope you get to create today. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. Have fun, everybody. See you soon, class. Yay! <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>